All right guys, so this electric motor showed up at our shop as a rush repair. This winding is no good, so that means we're gonna have to rip out all this wire, we're gonna have to count the turns, we're gonna have to put everything back exactly as we took it out. This is a 1.5 kilowatt Siemens electric motor. We'll take as much information as we can before we rip anything apart so we can see that it's Y connected on the outside. So it's six leads, it's a Y delta, but it's wired for high voltage. I wanna look at how these coils are shaped. We're gonna measure all this because we need it to fit back in exactly as we took it out. If we make the winding too big, we're also gonna add resistance and we're also gonna have excessive heating. I'm normally not a giant fan of an open flame to any of these stator cores, but being that this is a rush job and we know kind of what we're doing a little bit here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use a little bit of heat to get this out. We'll use that pneumatic chisel and we'll cut this winding and we're going to cut it as close as we can to that stator core just like this so that we can rip the winding out from the other side. And in case you were going to talk about it, yes, we did buy a cutoff machine so we can start using that instead of the air chisel, but I really kind of like the air chisel. Because we haven't ran this through a burn off oven, these coils are going to be super hard to remove so we're going to have to pull each one of these out, but we need to make sure that we keep these coils intact because we need to count the amount of turns inside of these coils. Some of them were a little stubborn to remove, but I did get all of them out. This has six groups of coils with three coils per group, so it's actually a consequent pole connected motor. It was Y delta. I'm going to make this a one Y connection. And I'm going to show you a little trick I learned from the old timer a while ago. So you can see a lot of that paper is still held on inside that slot. I sandblasted it. The paper's not coming out. It still has varnish on it. So we're going to use this torch. I take the tip off of it and we're going to be able to burn every little piece of that paper out of these slots. We'll sandblast it one more time. We'll be able to get it perfectly clean. Again, I'm not suggesting you do this. I am not a fan of an open flame to these stator cores because we don't want to damage that inner laminal insulation. However, the bean counters want this bad boy back right away. So we get it all cleaned up. We can start making our coils. We got to insulate all of these slots. We got a little bit of a job ahead of us, but make sure you guys are having fun at work. It's Halloween season. And if you got any like decorations laying around, you got to hide them around work just to keep people on their toes. So because this didn't go through that burn off oven, you can see that this coil is extremely rigid. All the wires are tight together. It's varnished, it's solid, it's hard. We're gonna heat it up with this torch. We'll bang it on a table. We'll be able to separate these wires a little bit. We can go through and count these because we have to match these turns. If we don't put the same amount of turns in, the motor doesn't operate properly. It doesn't perform under the same efficiency. You could burn this thing up immediately by not using the correct amount of turns. These are concentric coils, which means circles inside of circles. It's kind of a basket winding, if you will. It's not a traditional lap winding of other videos of mine that you've seen. So we'll start inserting these coils group by group. We're gonna use some glass cambric tape in between these phases here because we do have a potential difference between our A, B, and C phases. It's really common for electric motors to short on those end turns if we don't have that proper insulation in between those phases. After that, we're gonna throw down the ITIG winding analyzer, which is gonna do a mega ohm test, a high potential test. We can do a surge test. We can actually check our resistance. We need to make sure that we are putting in our ambient temperature so that we're getting correct readings. And I sped this part up a little bit, but you can see it's starting to do our pulses and check our sine waves of our different phases. You're seeing the previous reading on the screen as it changes through. And then you can see that we superimpose all those. We have one single sine wave, which means this thing is done. It goes back in the tank. They got it back the next day. So this was given to us on a Tuesday afternoon and we gave it back to them Wednesday morning. Cheers, guys.